Our protagonist, Lin Yi, is having a heated argument with his manager, Lily Yu, which ends up with him being fired. The argument started because he refused to give his leader a gift to make his life better, basically bribery. And in the corrupt corporation world, it is a grave sin to not bootlick. If it weren't bad enough, he then receives a call from his girlfriend who, before he can say anything, tells him that she wants to break up with him. She harshly tells him that she doesn't want to waste her whole life with a poor man like him and that she has already found another guy who's rich enough to fulfill all her gold-digging fantasies. So she tells him to never contact her again. With that, his girlfriend hangs up the call. In just one day, he lost both his job and his girlfriend. This turned out to be probably the worst day of his life, but all that is about to change. Suddenly, a bright blue light shines in front of him as a digital woman in a revealing mate costume appears out of thin air. She introduces herself as Ling Wei, the AI companion of the full career experience system, and his new servant. For some reason, Lin Ye has been chosen to receive the full career experience system where he gets to experience a new career every week and receive amazing rewards to turn him into the world's biggest rich hotshot. Lin Ye almost couldn't contain his excitement at receiving the legendary systems seen in novels and manhuas, it's time to turn his life around. Just then, his first notification from the system pops up in front of his eyes. The notification informs him that just for being the system's owner, he is rewarded the full Uber driver registration package, 1 billion yuan, 100% controlling interests in the Peninsula Hotel, and a Pagani sports car worth 3 billion yuan. Lin Yi exclaims in surprise after seeing his rewards. The amount of funds he obtains from just this package alone could set him up for several lifetimes. However, Ling Wei reminds him that he can only experience each career for a week so he can only receive rewards from his Uber career for the rest of the week before he changes jobs. In Lin Yi's view though, this system makes it even better for him as he can simply reap the rewards from each package and become insanely rich. Ling Wei then takes out the Pagani's keys and tells him that the Pagani is in parking lot C area 22. Just then, his phone pings as it receives a new notification. The notification tells him that he is now registered as an Uber driver and that 10 million yuan has been sent to his account. Lin Ya is ecstatic to see that the rewards he receives through the system are real and heads down into the parking area to see his new car. His eyes observe his surroundings as he enters parking lot C. Usually only big shots in the company get to park here so it is full of expensive cars. As he walks to the area where his shiny expensive Pagani is parked, he sees a long-legged beauty struggling to start her car. Lin Yi recognizes the woman as Miss Ji who is a higher up in the company and goes over to offer his help. Miss Ji recognizes Lin Yi as one of the employees from the sales department and tells him about her current dilemma. Seeing his chance to show off his new Pagani sports car, Lin Yi offers her a ride in his car, but Miss Ji politely declines, explaining that it's already late and she still needs to go to the Urban Renewal Authority, so she doesn't want to bother him. Unfortunately, their conversation attracts the attention of a nearby rich sleazebag who brags that she should come have a ride with him in his sports car instead of a small employee like Lin Yi. Miss Jai recognizes the sleazebag as Lai Yunhang, a notorious perverted flirt, and shoots down his offer. She is aware of his antics and refuses to have anything to do with him. But her cold attitude towards him does not deter Lai Yunhang who remains stubborn and tries to push his offer on her even slyly bragging about his new 200 million yuan sports car. Luckily, our daring protagonist interrupts his offer by saying there is no need as he will send Miss Ji away. Lai Yunhang looks at his cheap appearance and laughs at his proposal, suggesting to Miss Ji that she should not go with Lin Yi because carpooling with him, she is taking a blow to her status. Annoyed by his hubris, Miss Ji retorts that she doesn't care if Lin Yi's car is ordinary and cheap. Being in Lin Yi's company is way better than what a pervert like him can offer. Snorting at her remarks, Lai Yunhang follows them both to prepare his vicious slander of Li Yin's car. But what they see parked in Area 22 makes them stop in their tracks in shock. It's a Pagani wind child, parked there in all its glory. Lin Yi proudly walks up to it and brags about his new car to the shocked Lai Yunhang who cannot believe what he is seeing. Taking out the keys, he opens the car door for Miss Ji like a true gentleman while teasing Lai Yunhang for trying to pick up Miss Jai in a sports car that is only worth 200 million yuan. Lai Yunhang is angered by his comment but cannot retort. It's a Pagani wind child after all. It is so rare that he can't even get an appointment to just talk about getting this sports car. Realizing his mistake, Lai Yunhang hurriedly tries to suck up to Lin Yi and ask for his forgiveness. 
However, Lin Yi arrogantly refuses to acknowledge him, saying that he is nowhere near qualified to stay by his side. And with that, Lin Yi drives off in his brand new sports car, leaving Lin Yunhang in the dust. Miss Ji's head continues to reel from her amazement as they drive to the Urban Renewal Authority. She is shocked that a mere employee in the sales department can own such an expensive car. Lin Yi laughs at seeing his boss's confusion and makes up a story about him secretly being a second-generation rich playboy who simply wants to enjoy life by working in small jobs. He explains that right now he is trying his hand at Uber and suggests that Miss Ji try placing an order for him. Somehow, Miss Ji believes Lin Yi's words and opens her Uber account to place her order for him. Soon, they arrive at the Urban Renewal Authorization. Miss Ji pays for her ride and thanks him before entering the building. He's completed his first job. Ling Wei appears to congratulate him and tells him that the system has awarded him 50,000 proficiency points and 5 billion yuan for completing his first job. Plus, his driver career completion went up by 5%. Lin Yi couldn't believe it. $5 billion just for completing an Uber drive. This system is insanely overpowered. The scene then changes to the peninsula, a famous five-star hotel and one of the top hotels in all of China. In the hotel, an arrogant young rich man named Yunji is showing off how rich he is to a beautiful girl named Sisi Lu. This Sisi Lu is our main protagonist's ex-girlfriend who broke up with him earlier. She left Lin Yi so that she can be with the much richer and more successful Yunji instead who is currently flaunting how rich he is by renting a private room for her birthday in the peninsula. Sissi embraces her new boyfriend, thankful that she has found such a good sugar daddy. Yunji smiles at having a beauty compliment him, however, Yunji's good mood sours as he recognizes a familiar face entering the peninsula hotel. It's Lai Yin, here to claim his 100% controlling interest in the peninsula hotel. Unaware of that fact though, the two look at him in disgust for tainting the atmosphere of this high-quality hotel with his poor presence. Sissi berates him for having the gall to show up in the peninsula. She misunderstands that he came there to try to gain her back, but Lin Yi knows better than to pick a gold digger again. He tells Sissi that he isn't here for her and that he can go to this average hotel and stay here without paying for anything. Yunji scoffs at Lin Yi's words, believing them to be lies in a feeble attempt to look good in front of his ex. This is one of the best five-star hotels in all of China. He doesn't deserve to be here. Sissy couldn't let her new boyfriend's mood be ruined by her ex, so she decisively called security on him. In a flash, several security guards rushed over. Yunji smiles as he looks forward to seeing Lin Yi getting humiliated by security and getting thrown out. But contrary to both his and Sissy's expectations, the guards didn't apprehend the so-called poor bastard and instead respectfully bowed towards him. The two are completely shocked, how did the security guards know who Lin Yi is? Could he be the owner of the Peninsula Hotel? But despite what they say in their heads, reality seems to differ as one of the guards informs him that they must escort him to the conference room to discuss updates about the hotel. Sissy looks in horror as Lin Yi agrees and follows the security guard deeper into the hotel. The worst possible thing that can happen to a gold digger is happening to her, losing out on a rich man. When Lin Yi finally arrives at the conference room, he is instantly greeted with financial statements, contracts, and other important documents that need reviewing for the peninsula to stay afloat. Seeing the huge stack of papers, Lin Yi realizes the downsides of obtaining the peninsula hotel as he must work to gain money now. With a disgruntled expression, he simply tells them to continue with the same pattern of work before and that he trusts them to do the right thing. Just then, another staff member enters the conference room and informs him that a customer wants to file a complaint against the hotel. The other staff member asks her what the complaint is, and she explains that this customer filed an application at the hotel's car rental service to rent a Mercedes-Benz. However, the hotel's last available one was taken by a VIP user, and now the customer is complaining non-stop about how the hotel wronged her. After hearing the full story from his staff member, Lin Yi reassures his staff that he will meet with the client himself to discuss her complaint, assigning the mounds of paperwork to them instead. Lin Yi then walks out of the conference room and prepares to use his charm to solve the problem. Lin Yi soon arrives in front of the client's room and politely knocks on her door. A beautiful woman in a bathrobe opens the door and Lin Yi politely greets her, introducing himself as the person in charge of the hotel. Gu Jingxi is surprised that the owner is someone so young and so handsome. Instantly, her attitude turned to full 180. All the irritation she had from the hotel's faulty customer service is washed away by our protagonist's incredible attractiveness. 
She says that the car rental issue isn't a big deal and that they can just arrange another car for her. However, our cheeky MC sees an opportunity to get into a beauty's good graces and offers to rent out his Pagani to her. The mention of an expensive sports car suddenly makes him even more attractive in Gu Jingxi's eyes. But she sadly explains that she can't afford to rent such an expensive car. Luckily for her, Lin Yi has a soft spot for beauties, and he offers to drive her where she is going. All she must do in return is to pay him through Uber. Gu Jingxi is grateful for Lin Yi's kindness. Since she's in a hurry though, she invites Lin Yi inside as he waits for her to change. Inside, Lin Yi is treated to a glass of water and a seductive show as Gu Jingxi, intentionally or not, changes her clothes behind a blurry glass panel. Showcasing her amazing figure to Lin Yi, who seems more than satisfied by the erotic display. She steps out wearing a seductive dress which greatly accentuates her amazing figure. Lin Yi is more than happy to accompany a beautiful lady, and then they both go down together. Meanwhile, in the lobby, Sazi and Yunji can be seen arguing with each other. Sisi does not want to be seen together with Yunji anymore so that Lin Yi would not misunderstand and think that they are still together. Yunji is flabbergasted by this woman's thick skin. He angrily tells her that she is delusional to think that Lin Yi would take her back after she left him for a richer man. One of Sissy's friends worriedly looks at her as she agrees with Yunji's sentiment and is unsure if Lin Yi will take her back. Sissy is confident in herself though and reassures her friend that if she plays with Lin Yi's pity, he will come crawling back to her. Her friend sighs in envy. Sissy has Lin Yi now, yet she herself can't even find a good quality man like him in her life. A gloating smile forms on Sissy's face as she reassures her friend again that once she makes up with Lin Yi, she will take her out on a ride on his Pagani. However, her ambitions of being a trophy gold-digging wife seem to go down the drain as she looks back to see Lin Yi accompanying an even more beautiful woman down the stairs. Still stubbornly holding on to hope, Sissy puts on her best smile and hurriedly approaches the two. With the sweetest voice she can muster, she greets Lin Yi as honey while asking if the woman next to him is his secretary. He defensively tells her that who Gu Jingxi is to him does not matter to her. Sensing the hostility in his words, Sizi activates her crocodile tears to garner some pity points, pitifully asking if he didn't love her anymore despite so many years of affection. Although she does admit that Gu Jingxi has a much better body than her, she still believes her skills are far superior. Gu Jingxi affectionately holds Lin Yi's arm and tells her that he complimented her skills as being much better than his ex-girlfriends. Both Lin Yi and Sizi stare in surprise at her actions, but Lin Yi reacts fast and pulls her even closer to his body, saying that not only are her skills much better but she is also much more flexible. Both then walk hand in hand and leave the hotel. In a final act of desperation, Sizi throws herself at Lin Yi and offers to be one of his other lovers instead. She somehow truly thinks that with their past, Lin Yi still has some feelings for her that she can use. Unfortunately though, Lin Yi now knows his own value and has had enough of her antics. He angrily points out all the terrible things about her like how she doesn't wash her hair, that she has a poor figure, and that she is incredibly vain and would cheat if she finds a richer man. She's not worth the effort. With his savage barrage of insults finished, he warns her not to approach him again and turns away leaving her to wallow in her own despair. The pair make their way to the parking area where Lin Yi's Pagani awaits them both. Lin Yi then asks Gu Jingxi where she would like to go, and she replies that she needs to go to Fairview Hotel to attend the wedding of a friend. She's embarrassed to ask a favor from him, but Lin Yi reassures her that she is more than welcome to ask. At the Fairview Hotel, three of Gu Jingxi's friends can be seen impatiently waiting for her to arrive. One of them complains about how late she is, and sarcastically asks if she's on a date with her supposed rich boyfriend she keeps bragging about. One of the friends said that Gu Jingxi mentioned she would be arriving soon with the new Mercedes-Benz her boyfriend bought for her. But the last woman warns her friend not to believe her words. She believes that Gu Jingxi is simply bragging about having a rich boyfriend since the rest of them have rich boyfriends. In all the parties they attend, she always comes alone so there is no way she's not single. She is probably just jealous of them. But as if the universe wanted to spite her words, Lin Yi's shiny new Pagani whizzes by and parks a few feet away from the three ladies. From the sports car steps out the beautiful Gu Jingxi, looking especially dazzling next to the expensive sports car. One of her friends sighs in admiration. Not only was Gu Jingxi's boyfriend real, but he also owns a Pagani which is several times more expensive than a Mercedes-Benz. 
Seeing her friend's admirable looks makes Gu Jingxi happy. To really drive the nail on her rich boyfriend, she quickly ducks down and asks Lin Yi for another favor. Since she pretended to be his new lover to repel his snake of an ex, it's his turn to pretend to be her lover so that she'll look good in front of her friends. Lin Yai is happy to help and makes sure his voice is especially loud while he bids his honey goodbye. The scene then shifts to Lin Yi's apartment where we see a young woman arguing with her mother. The young woman's name is Zhang Jingjing, a friend of Lin Yi, and currently, she is trying to convince her mother to let Lin Yi extend his overdue rent payment for a few more days. Her mother, Wu Jinlin, on the other hand, refuses to do so as she suspects that he will run away. She is also upset with her daughter's crush on Lin Yi as he sees his measly sales employee wage as not enough to support her daughter. Her daughter is going to be a civil servant in the future. Lin Yi's mere sales employee wage is incomparable. Lin Yi enters the house right in the middle of the mother and daughter pair's debate. Lin Yi respectfully greets them both and informs Wu Jinlin that he will be moving out of their home. Wu Jinlin misunderstands the situation as him trying to run away from his rent payments and angrily scolds him for trying to cheat her out of her money. However, Lin Yi reassures her that isn't his intention and to show his goodwill by transferring a huge amount of money to Wu Jinlin's account. Wu Jinlin is shocked. The monthly rent is only 2,000 yuan, yet he transferred twice that amount. Lin Yi explains that he feels guilty for always being late for his rent payments and says that the extra money is compensation for it. Wu Jinlin realizes he is serious about moving out and curiously asks him how he is going to earn more money to rent a new place. Lin Yi vaguely says that he will earn his money through running Uber from now on and proceeds to grab his things. Zhang Jingjing offers to help him with his bags and Wu Jinlin, fearing that he will steal something, follows him downstairs. Outside, Zhang Jingjing catches sight of Lin Yi's parked Bagani and stares in awe, wondering which rich guy decided to visit their neighborhood. Meanwhile, Wu Jinlin looked around for Lin Yi's old car but couldn't find it anywhere. Confused, she asks Lin Yi where he parked his old cherry, and he reveals the shiny new car keys he obtained from the system. Turns out he is the owner of the Pagani. Both mother and daughter stare in surprise, especially Wu Jinlin who cannot believe that he owns such an expensive car for a simple wage earner. Lin Yi smiles at their shocked faces and brags that he was simply pretending in the past. He only worked at his job part-time to enjoy life. He is a rich second-generation nepotism baby in secret. Lin Yi then gets into his fancy sports car and drives away, leaving both in the dust. Both stare at the speeding away car speechlessly. They can't even recognize the new Lin Yi anymore. Zhang Jingjing looks at her mother and teases her for disliking Lin Yi for being so poor, yet here he is now with a car worth 3 billion yuan. Now that he is rich, she can even try going for him seriously. But Wu Jinlin smacks her out of her delusional thoughts. Lin Yi was not worthy of her back when Wu Jinlin thought he was poor so naturally now that he is rich. Zhang Jingjing is not worthy of him. It's better for her to just keep studying and reviewing to be a civil servant instead. Back at the Peninsula Hotel, one of his staff members moves Lin Yi's belongings to the presidential suite where he will live from now on. In addition, Lai Yin also asks the staff to send food to his room. He's starving. In his new suite, Lai Yin enjoys the loudish cooking of the hotel and stuffs himself silly with gourmet food. As he pats his oversized tummy in satisfaction, he receives a text on his phone. It's from Miss Ji saying that her business at the Urban Renewal Authority is finished and she is asking if Lin Yi can come and get her. Looks like there's no rest for our charming protagonist as Lin Yi agrees to be there in 30 minutes to pick her up. Soon he arrives in front of the URA's building where Miss Ji can be seen waiting in front. Lin Yi excitedly greets Miss Ji and asks her if she would like to place an order. Confused, Miss Ji asks what order he was talking about to which Lin Yi cheekily replies that she must pay him on Uber for the ride. Miss Ji laughs at Lin Yi's silly antics, yet agrees to place an order. Miss J recalls that Lin Yi was the best employee they had on the sales team, he was even known as the local sales champion. Yet even a great employee like him was dismissed. Something fishy must be going on inside the company, so she decides to investigate the problem even more once she returns to the company. For now, she places the order on Uber and gives Lin Yin his money. Suddenly, Ling Wei appears out of nowhere in a skimpy bunny outfit, surprising Lin Yi. She reassures the pale-faced Lin Yi that Miss Ji cannot hear her nor see her. Ling Wei observes the beautiful Miss Ji and is impressed. The system gives her 85 points on the charming scale. Because of that, Lin Yi has completed the system's hidden mission. 
to transport at least two or more beauties with a charming score of 85 or more points. The mission awards him 10,000 proficiency points and increases his completion progress bar to 50%. The rich rewards entice Lin Yi who realizes that this is a good way to earn proficiency points. Curiously, Lin Yi asks Ling Wei what a woman with a rating of 85 or more looks like. To help him, Ling Wei gives him a little tip. Women who are as beautiful as Miss Ji have a rating of 85 or more. With this very vague answer, Lin Yi now has an idea of where he can start with his proficiency points farm. Seeing him get lost in thought, Miss Ji asks Lin Yi if everything is alright. It seems as if he's facing a bigger problem than she is facing right now. Her statement probes Lin Yi's curiosity as he asks Miss Ji what kind of issue she is facing. Miss G confesses that the company needs to hold an event soon, however, all the hotels in the area are fully booked and can't spare the space for the area. She's been worrying about how to solve this problem for the past few days already. Hearing her dilemma, Lin Yi's eyes sparkle as he finds another opportunity to win over this beautiful woman's heart. He suggests that Miss G should try to book a venue with the peninsula. Its class is more than enough to please the higher-ups in the company. Miss G thinks that Lin Yi must be kidding since the peninsula is the most famous five-star hotel in China, and there is no way she can book the location even if she isn't afraid of the cost. Unbeknownst to her though, she is sitting right next to the hotel's owner. Lin Yi confidently tells her that what she says might not necessarily be true. Life is full of mysteries after all, just like how they both met today. She won't know if she doesn't try. His charming words convince Miss G who agrees to go to the peninsula hotel. So with her permission, Lin Yi drifts the car around and heads to the Peninsula Hotel. However, Miss Ji adds a condition. If she can't negotiate to have a venue at the hotel, she doesn't have to pay for her ride. Feeling mischievous, Lin Yi innocently asks her what would happen if she were able to negotiate a venue with the Peninsula Hotel. Miss Ji thinks deeply for a moment before deciding to let Lin Yi pick his reward if he wins. Lin Yi thinks for a moment about what he wants Miss Ji to do before telling her that she must do 10 S squats. Miss Ji suddenly has a bad feeling about his reward and asks him what exactly an S squat is. Lin Yi tells her to search it up, so she pulls out her phone to see what it is. When the results are loaded, her face instantly flushes in embarrassment. Doing this is way too embarrassing. Then again, she did try to call the Peninsula Hotel before, and the manager said there was no more room. She ended up regretfully leaving that call with nothing to show for. Thinking that nothing would really change, she decided to take the chance at a free ride, so she agrees to the bet, an S-squad if she loses and a free ride if she wins. The pair soon arrives at the hotel and enter the lobby where Miss G approaches the lobby to ask for manager Wang. The receptionist, of course, recognizes Lai Yin who is standing next to Miss G but decides to stay quiet. The receptionist recognizes that her boss is probably trying to charm this woman by pretending to be the pauper to attract the fair maiden. The receptionist respects Lai Yin's game and decides to tell manager Wang in advance to follow the lady's demands to let their boss earn some good points. Soon, manager Wang arrives at the lobby and respectfully greets Miss Ji, learning from the receptionist's heads up that his boss is trying to gain Miss Ji's favor. Miss G politely greets manager Wang back and explains that she is the representative of her company, the Sunrise Group. The purpose of their sudden meeting today is to arrange a conference for her company in the Peninsula Hotel, so she is inquiring if the Peninsula Hotel's auditorium is still available to become a venue. Miss Jai is already fully expecting manager Wang to reject her offer. However, with Lin Yi signaling manager Wang from behind Miss G, manager Wang has no choice but to accept unless he wants to lose his job. He tells Miss Ji that it is available and that he will arrange it for her when she needs it. Miss Jai is ecstatic after hearing his response. She tells him that the conference will be held in 10 days and manager Wine agrees to set up the auditorium for her and give her his full support. Miss Ji returns to the car completely ecstatic. She didn't expect that she would be able to secure the deal. All this thanks to Lin Yi's advice. Miss Ji really couldn't thank him enough for his help. Lin Yai is happy that he can help his old higher up and slightly teases her by saying that he told her that there would be a surprise. But of course he also wouldn't forget about their bet concerning the S squats. Since she was able to secure the deal, she must do what she promised and give him a little show. Miss Ji's happy mood instantly disappears as she blushes deeply in embarrassment at Lin Yi's perverted antics. But as the president of Sunrise Group, she must always be true to her word and agrees to follow through. Lin Yi excitedly pulls down her seatbelt, impatient to see this beauty squat down and work it for him. 
Miss Jai is completely flabbergasted at his sudden change in personality. She's still in the car. Squatting here would almost be impossible with the little space. However, Lin Yi seems to be too excited to take that into account and impatiently insists that it's possible. Miss Ji suggests that she should do it at her own house instead. Lin Yi finally agrees to her suggestion and floors the gas pedal to take him to Miss Ji's house faster, scaring her in the process. She didn't think anyone would be that desperate to see a simple less squat. Lin Yi's frantic driving lets them arrive at Miss Ji's home in no time. There Miss Jai invites him in as she prepares her heart to do Lin Yi's perverted request. She shyly looks back at Lin Yi who is sitting on the couch and asks him if he wants to see her ass squat now. Lin Yi replies by impatiently hurrying her up. With a huge blush on her face, Miss Ji gives a forewarning that she has never done something like this before so Lin Yi shouldn't complain if it does not turn out well. Then with a click of her heels, she squats down right in front of Lin Yi, exposing all her lady bits to the world. The display made a steady stream of blood pour down Lin Yi's nose. Unfortunately for him, Miss Ji's father has now also seen the show, and he does not seem as pleased to see his only daughter doing what she is doing. Both Miss Ji and Lin Yi instantly stop what they are doing. They've been caught. Still blushing heavily, Miss Ji asks her father what he is doing at home already. However, her father stays silent. Seeing his own daughter do some erotic squats in front of a random man he doesn't know fills him with anger. The awkward silence persists in the room until Miss Ji's father retorts by asking why he can't be here. It's his house too after all. Miss Ji knows her father is angry after the unholy scene he just witnessed, so she frantically tries to explain that Lin Yai is just her new yoga instructor. But Miss Ji's father can see the hold in her lame excuse. Yoga instructors don't watch from the sidelines after all, it's obvious the man she is with isn't one. Still trying to salvage the situation, Miss Ji tries to play it off by saying that he is an advanced type of yoga instructor who only gives verbal instructions. But her father has had enough of hearing her excuses and tells her to stand aside as he wishes to talk to the random man in his house. The old man grumpily sits next to Lin Yi who scooches aside in fear of the intimidating old man. Miss Ji's father then angrily looks at him and starts to interrogate him on what he does. Nervously, Lin Yai introduces himself and says that his job now is running Uber. His answer worsens the old man's already bad mood as he sarcastically asks what kind of sports car he drives for Uber to attract his daughter. Without missing a beat, Lin Yi replies that he does drive one and that it's a Pagani wind child worth 3 billion yuan. Hearing this, the old man's expression softens as his attitude has a 180 degree turn. He saw the Pagani outside so he knew that he must be legit. He compliments him on how he is so much better than other dudes his age who just eat food and drink alcohol all day long. The old man then pats Lin Yi on his back and says that he can now rest easy knowing that his daughter found such a good man. Lin Yi couldn't believe Miss Ji's father's sudden change of attitude. Miss Ji tries to clear the misunderstanding he has and explains that she and Lin Yin are just friends, they aren't together. Her father simply looks at her confused. She already flashed her panties for Lin Yi, yet she is saying that they are just friends. He can never understand what antics of the younger generation. Nonetheless, Miss Ji's father likes what he sees in Lin Yi, especially his Pagani. He invites him to come with Miss Ji to her grandfather's 80th birthday, which is coming up soon. He then decides to give the two lovebirds a little space and leaves the room. Now it's only the two of them once again. Miss Jai is embarrassed that her father misunderstands her now and thinks she is dating Lin Yi. Then without any warning, Lin Yi pounces on Miss Ji and pins her to the couch. While on top of her, he admits that he quite enjoys the misunderstanding and jokes that they should continue. His out-of-pocket riz makes Miss Ji blush heavily as she shyly replies that there is nothing to continue. In reply, Lin Yi sneakily snakes his hand down Miss Ji's skirt while commenting on how this place looked good while she was squatting. Feeling his sneaky hands, Miss Ji quickly pushes away the perverted Lin Yi from her. Confused, Lin Yi explains that his intentions are not perverted and that he is teaching her some advanced gym jumping exercises that emphasize exercising her thigh muscles. Somehow this convinces Miss Ji which makes her feel terrible for misunderstanding his intentions. Suddenly, Lin Yi's phone rings and he takes it out to see a text message from one of his colleagues, inviting him out to a dinner some of them arranged for him because of his sudden dismissal. With nothing else to do, Lin Yi explains to Miss Ji that he still has an appointment and bids her farewell. He leaves to attend the little dinner get-together. 
Still flustered from his perverted request and his in-depth observation of his thigh muscles, Miss G doesn't see him out and tells him to go away. The scene then shifts to the restaurant where the dinner is taking place. Lin Yi walks inside and is instantly greeted by one of his colleagues, a beautiful white-haired woman named Wang Ying. She comments on how it was too hasty of him to quit so suddenly. With his prowess he could have been promoted as sales director one day. From Wang Ying's words, it can be surmised that Lin Yi was a capable worker back then, however, not all seem to agree with her sentiment. Another man at the table named Wang Yue says that Wang Ying is wrong. He does not think that Lin Yi's performance back then would merit him being the sales director. Instead, he believes that his own performance far surpasses Lin Yi's, saying that he could have been the sales director is way too far-fetched. His harsh words offend Wang Ying who defend Lin Yi by saying that his performance was much better so the position of sales director naturally should have been his. Her words do not seem to bother Huang Yue though as he simply shrugs and says that it does not matter anymore since he's been fired. He then pours a drink and offers it to another man at the table named Li Jandong and congratulates him for having his appointment letter to become sales director go back down, proposing a toast in his honor. Li Jandong smiles humbly and refuses the toast, saying that Lin Yai is the main character of the show today so he cannot go around stealing the spotlight. Despite this, it is obvious that they both do not mean well and are doing this on purpose. Lin Yi senses the concealed hostility they have for him and calls them out on their behavior. They are just here to steal the show and embarrass him. However, both men simply play dumb, saying that they are here to congratulate him. Yet their veiled insults continue to persist with Li Jandong asking what his plans are now in the big city without a job. If he doesn't get a job soon, he must go crawling back to the countryside. Wang Yue laughs at his friend's comment and adds that Lin Yi can't even do that because he's an orphan, he doesn't have a home anywhere. Their arrogant looks say it all, they aren't here to be friends. Not letting Lin Yi even take a break from the insults for a second, Li Jiandong offers him a drink while arrogantly saying that he knows the property manager in his community. If he really wants to see what a home is like, then he is welcome to come to his door anytime. Even Wang Ying is taken aback by just how savage that burn was, however, Lin Yi himself remains calm. He turns down the invitation for the drink and retorts that he is doing just fine in the big city. The money he receives from running Uber is enough to sustain him. Just before the two can start insulting him about his new job choice, a waiter interrupts their conversation to ask who owns the Pagani outside. Everyone rushes to the window once they hear what they say. A Pagani? That's the type of car that only super rich people can buy. One of them predicts that the car costs at least 20 million yuan. The waiter explains that the Pagani is blocking the other cars from parking, so he must inform the owner to move. Lin Yi perks up hearing about his irresponsible parking practices, which does not escape the eyes of Huan Yue. He snorts and says that the waiter isn't talking about the old cherry he drives around. It's a billion yuan sports car, but Huan Yue is instantly proven wrong as Lin Yi takes out the solid gold keys to the Pagani and confirms that the sports car is indeed his own. All the men at the dining table stand up in shock, especially Li Jiandong who can't believe that an orphan can afford such an expensive car. The stereotyping earns a nasty look from Lin Yi, who asks if being an orphan means you can't be rich. Lin Yi can no longer stomach the arrogance of his former co-workers. He offers to take Wang Ying home, and the two prepare to leave the restaurant. Li Jandong soon realizes his mistake. He can't miss the opportunity to personally know a rich big shot. Li Jandong quickly positions himself in front of Lin Yi and grabs his hands while calling him big brother. He apologizes for his short-sightedness and tries to invite him back to the table. But he's already lost his chance, Lin Yi takes back his hand and tells Li Jandong that he will receive no help from him in becoming the sales director. Then under the envious eyes of his former colleagues, Lin Yi and Wang Ying enter the shiny Pagani and drive off into the night. Wang Ying is completely surprised by the sudden turn of events. She has been working with Lin Yi for so long, yet she never knew that he was a rich guy. Lin Yi chuckles and humbly says that he received it all from his heritage. He does not like showing off how wealthy he is unless he must slap some arrogant douchebag's faces. What also surprises Wang Ying is that Lin Yi mentioned that he is working via Uber. Is this luxurious sports car what he uses to get people around? Lin Yi confirms that he is currently earning money using Uber and invites her to kindly pay for her ride to support him financially. Lin Yi's charming words convince Wang Ying, so she pulls out her phone to place her order. The notification on his phone goes off, 
telling him that he has received Wang Ying's payment. However, the system informs him that the overall scan on the charming meter has placed her at 84 points of charm, which is below the mission requirements, therefore, he receives no rewards. Lin Yi frowns, he didn't expect that the beautiful Wang Ying isn't even considered a great beauty by the system. Wang Ying notices his strange stare of disappointment at her, so she asks him if everything was alright. Lin Yai is unwilling to lose out on his potential rewards just because of the system's high standards, so she randomly asks Wang Ying if there was any way to make herself more charming. Taking his words as a challenge, she confidently says that increasing your charm is very easy. To demonstrate, she reaches into her purse and pulls out a pair of erotic-looking fishnet stockings before seductively putting it on in front of Lin Yi. She then strikes a pose and even pulls down her dress a bit to give Lin Yai a little show. Now there is no way that Lin Yi will think that she is not charming. However, Lin Yi seemingly doesn't even care about how beautiful Wang Ying looks right now and instead hurriedly tells the system to reevaluate Wang Ying's charm. The system takes a few seconds to scan Wang Ying once again and gives her an overall score of 85, just barely making the mark to allow Lin Yi to receive the mission rewards. Lin Yi receives an increase in his career completion that shoots it up to 15% in a luxurious villa at Jushugaku that he can claim by finding the sales manager. Lin Yi swears in his happiness at receiving such a good reward, confusing Wang Ying in the process. Soon, they arrive at this huge gated villa where Wang Ying and her husband lives. Seeing all he has to offer, Wang Ying decides to take her chance and invite him up to her home for a little talk, since her husband is away on a business trip. However, Lin Yi learned his lesson about women. If she's willing to cheat on her man with an even more successful guy, then she's for the streets. Lin Yi politely declines, so Wang Ying steps out of the Pagani alone and bids Lin Yi goodbye as he drives away. The next day, Lin Yi drives to the Jushugaku sales department to pick up the new villa he obtained through the system. When Lin Yi enters the building, he recognizes a familiar face working there. A young green-haired woman named Zhang Menju looks at Lin Yai in surprise. She was one of his colleagues back when he worked at Sunrise Group who left the company way before he was fired. Curious, Menju asks Lin Yi what he is doing in a real estate sales department. Lin Yi scratches his head in embarrassment and replies that he is here to see her manager obtain a real estate license so that he can buy a home. This surprises Menju even more. She is very aware of how much he earns since they used to work for the same company. She discourages him from buying anything here as the prices for a set can go as high as 800 million. Out of her own goodwill, she advises Lin Yi not to waste his time here since he cannot afford anything anyway and tries to push him out the door. However, a firm voice stops her in her tracks. It's her manager Wang Hui. Manager Wang number two scolds Menju for trying to meddle in a customer's business and tells her that she will deal with her later. Menju tries to protest but female manager Wang's attention is no longer on her. Instead, she seductively brushes Lin Yi's hands against her blessed assets and introduces herself to him before offering to show him the rooms first. Menju, being the nosy girl that she is, tries to stop her manager from wasting her time on a poor man by explaining that he used to be her old colleague so she knows Lin Yi cannot afford anything. Her careless remarks anger manager Wang who scolds her and tells her to go to HR to settle her salary and leave. Menju feels wrong as she genuinely believes that her manager is wasting her time. She stubbornly insists that Lin Yi cannot afford anything that they have to offer. However, her belief is soon shattered as manager Wang reveals that Lin Yi bought a set of nine villas from them earlier. This revelation shocks Menju so badly that she falls to the ground. Somehow, she seems more upset finding out that her former colleague is now rich than her losing her job. Lin Yi ignores the plight of his ex-coworker and instead focuses on his reward. He is impressed with the system's method of doing things. It didn't reward him just one villa, but nine, as expected of the legendary system. After Menju leaves, manager Wang apologizes to Lin Yi for her employee's attitude. Menju has been under a lot of stress lately, which has affected her mental health, but she doesn't really care about her mental well-being and is instead regretful that Menju's deteriorating mental health has affected Lin Yi's apartment buying experience. Lin Yi doesn't seem to care much either and is glad that Menju is fired. With the incident now put in the past, Lin Yi asks manager Wang if the formalities of obtaining his new villas are now complete and if he can already obtain the real estate license and keys for them. Manager Wang cheerfully confirms that the papers and titles are all ready as some of her staff present Lin Yi with the official documents and keys. 
Lin Yai is now the proud owner of several luxurious villas. He takes them to his car and plops the huge stacks of documents on the passenger seat. Suddenly, he receives a text message from Wang Yang telling him that Li Jiandong and Yu Lili, the woman that got him fired, have just been laid off from work. Lin Yi couldn't believe it. He was fired just yesterday and now the two people who opposed him at the company got fired. He compares the speed of their layoffs to a Formula One race car. Then he gets a new text message from Miss G telling him that she investigated the reasons for why he was fired and fired the two responsible for his departure. So Miss Jai is the one responsible for their quick dismissals. Lin Yi then curiously asks her what she will do now with the position of sales director since originally it was supposed to be Li Jiandong. Miss G admits to Lin Yi that she wants to hire him again and have him as the sales director. But Lin Yi politely declines the offer, citing that he is doing well in his part-time gig with Uber. He does suggest having Wang Ying take the mantle as sales director, though as she is a responsible worker and continued to be friendly with him even after he was fired. Miss G listens to his suggestion and promises to keep it in mind. In addition to the news, Miss G also texted to ask him to pick her up as her car is still at the repair shop being fixed. As her humble Uber driver, Lin Yai is more than happy to be of service. As he drives Miss G to the company, Lin Yi gets a sudden mission from the system. Get a five-star review to earn 200,000 proficiency points and an increase in his career completion until it reaches 25%. Lin Yi soon arrives at Sunrise Group. With the mission in mind, he reminds Miss G to give him a five-star review so that his Uber profile would look a lot better. Lin Yi did not ask for any five-star ratings before, so Miss Jai is surprised he is asking now. She recalls that she still owes him nine squats after their earlier session was rudely interrupted, so she proposes that in exchange for giving him a five-star review, he will have to make sure she doesn't have to do her nine other squats anymore. Lin Yi's mind instantly changed after hearing her suggestion. Career completion and proficiency points? It's super simple to earn them. But seeing such a beautiful beauty do the squats for him is practically a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He refuses to give up the privilege of seeing her do those erotic S squats. Miss Jai is taken aback by his dedication to seeing her do those S squats. Her face turns a deep red and she calls him an annoying pervert before unbuckling her seatbelt and getting out of the car. As Miss G exits, she runs into the familiar figure of Wang Ying who is surprised to see the president of Sunrise Group come out of Lin Yi's car. Seeing Wang Ying, Lin Yi starts acting as if he was a husband caught having an affair. He hurriedly explains that Miss G coincidentally called him up when she ordered a ride on Uber. His flustered behavior does not escape Wang Ying's keen eyes. Suddenly, the reason why Li Jiandong and Yu Lili were fired became clear. Turns out that Lin Yi has a relationship with the president of the company. How scandalous. This new piece of information disappoints Wang Ying, who realizes she has no chance with Lin Yi. The president is extremely beautiful after all. Apparently, she also coincidentally forgot that she's already married. Now in the presence of one of her employees, Miss G reverts to her professional mode. Her expression turns all serious as she tells Wang Ying that work is about to start for the day, so she beckons her to enter the building with her. Not wanting to anger her boss, Wang Ying respectfully follows behind her. But as they enter the building, Miss G's expression softens as she takes out her phone. Soon, Lin Yi's phone goes off as his Uber notifies him that he has just received a five-star review for his job. Excellent. Now he can reap his bountiful rewards. Lin Yi shoots a knowing look at Miss J. She may have a sharp tongue, but he has her wrapped around the tips of his fingers. Later in the day, Lin Yi receives another job on Uber. The app's GPS shows that the client is from Tiny Homes, which is close to where he is right now. With nothing to do, Lin Yi decides to take the job in hopes of improving his career completion. Lin Yi accepts the order and soon he receives a call from his client. A bubbly female voice answers him and asks how old he is. Although confused with the random question, Lin Yi replies that he is 24 years old. The client sighs in relief and quickly asks Lin Yi for a favor. In exchange for a five-star review, he must pretend to be her boyfriend when he arrives at her address. Lin Yi is speechless at first. He's already pretended to be several women's boyfriends in the span of a few days. Nonetheless, he isn't against doing it again and accepts the deal. Lin Yi then drives to the location on the GPS and eventually arrives in front of a tall condominium. Lin Yi navigates through the different floors until he reaches his client's condo and politely knocks on the door. A beautiful blonde-haired girl opens the door for Lin Yi, and he recognizes her as Xiao Yu, a 
a popular vlogger. Meanwhile, Xiao Yu is also taken aback after seeing Lin Yi. She did not expect her Uber driver to be so handsome, even better than some idle trainees. She bashfully takes his hand and leads him inside where her parents are waiting. Remembering their deal, Lin Yi respectfully greets Xiao Yu's mother as he steps inside. Xiao Yu's mother and father warmly greeted him and invited him inside. There they ask Lin Yi what he does in his spare time. Lin Yi smiles and says that he does Uber as his main job. The warm smiles from both the parents instantly disappear, replaced instead with looks of horror. They can't believe that their daughter picked an Uber driver of all people to date. Seeing the situation take a turn for the worst, Xiao Yu steps up to defend Lin Yi by saying that Uber is also a pretty profitable job, adding that she was able to buy all the jewelry she currently owns because of Lin Yi. In addition, Lai Yin is also saving up enough money for a business. Naturally though, her parents can see through all her lies and shoot judging looks at Lin Yi. Xiao Yu's father retorts that 9 out of 10 business ventures fail, her future is not secure with him. Trying to find a way out of her parents' nagging, she changes the subject by reminding them that they need to go to a friend's party. This seems to work as both parents temporarily drop the matter. Xiao Yu offers to let her boyfriend take them to the party while they both go to the mall afterwards, but Lin Yi interrupts her by embarrassingly admitting that his vehicle only has enough space for two seats. Xiao Yu and her parents looked at him, completely flabbergasted. A vehicle that only has two seats? Does that mean he is a motorcycle driver? Lin Yi leads them down with the embarrassed Xiao Yu and her disappointed parents in Tao. Behind Lin Yi's back, Xiao Yu's father complains to his wife that their daughter must have fallen on her head recently. She thought dating someone who owned a motorcycle was a good idea. Xiao Yu's mother agrees with her husband's sentiment and says that if their neighbors knew, they would become complete laughingstocks. But it seems that their worries were for naught as Lin Yi pulls out his iconic golden car keys and opens the door to his Pagani. Xiao Yu and her parents looked at the sports car in shock. They do not know the car's full value, but they are more than aware that it's worth a lot of money. This means that Lin Yi is loaded. With this, Xiao Yu's parents' attitudes had a full 180 change. They hurriedly push her towards the car while talking to Lin Yi respectfully. Soon, the pair drives off. While driving, Lin Yi asks Xiao Yu where she wanted to go, and she replies that she wants to go to the Times Square Mall. While they drive to her requested destination, Xiao Yu stares at Lin Yi pitifully and asks him if she can ask for another little favor. She asks if she can go live while she's in the car. Riding in an expensive sports car like this is super rare. Xiao Yu has got to take advantage of it and show off to her online audience. Lin Yi doesn't mind her starting a live if she gives him that five-star review. She replies that it's no problem and starts up her live. Flashing a peace sign to her audience, she shows off the car she's being driven around in. Her audience goes nuts after recognizing the car, their beloved vlogger is riding the luxurious Pagani wind child. A barrage of questions fills the chat. Who is she driving with? Is her boyfriend the owner of the car? Some of the viewers sigh in admiration as they find Lin Yi to be very handsome, while others troll Xiao Yu by saying that she probably sold her body to get in the car. Even with both positive and negative comments directed at her, Xiao Yu is ecstatic seeing all the attention she is getting for riding in a luxurious sports car. Plus, she doesn't mind giving her body to such a rich and handsome man. Soon, the two arrive at Times Square where Xiao Yu gets off. As promised, she gives him a full five-star review for his excellent acting skills. Ling Wei materializes on top of the surprise Lin Yi's lap and congratulates him for receiving another five-star review on his service. For finishing the mission, he is rewarded with increasing his career completion to 35% and mastering driving skills, including an entrance to the Zhanghai International Circuit, the best racetrack in the world besides the Abu Dhabi Circuit. Lin Yi decides that he will check it out once he has enough time. For now, he needs to give his phone an upgrade. He's been using the same old phone he had. Now that he has money, it's time to buy a new one, since he coincidentally took Xiao Yu to the Times Square Mall. Lin Yi decides to ask a favor in return by requesting that Xiao Yu takes him to the nearest phone shop. Of course, Xiao Yu wouldn't turn down the opportunity to get to know a rich hotshot better, so she readily agrees. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see the next part, comment below.